ओके हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक आई होप यू हैव सीन माय टू वीडियोस ऑन थ्योरी ऑफ कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी माय थर्ड वीडियो ऑन थ्योरी ऑफ कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर राइट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक एंड रिकॉल द कांसेप्ट दैट वी हैव डन सो फार सो यू रिमेंबर दैट दिस वाज माय फर्स्ट स्लाइड दैट आई हैव शोन यू देन कार्डिनल अप्रोच वेयर सम इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट हैज बीन शोन फीचर्स ऑफ यूटिलिटी टोटल यूटिलिटी मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी रिलेशन बिटवीन टीयू एंड एमयू देन लॉ ऑफ डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी एंड कंज्यूमर इक्विलिब्रियम इन वन कमोडिटी केस एंड कंज्यूमर इक्विलिब्रियम इन टू कमोडिटी केस राइट सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक ऑफ ऑर्डिनल अप्रोच दिस इज अ अनदर अप्रोच दैट वाज given by uh, jr hicks and rjd allen uh, to study or to find out the situation of consumer equilibrium right and in order to uh, study this approach uh, it is important for us to understand uh, some important concept and then we will move on to uh, finding out the condition of consumer equilibrium see here the first important concept is indifference schedule so what is the idea behind indifference schedule so the idea is such that indifference schedule is nothing but it is a table where we show different combination of the two goods so the two goods there there can be several combinations for example i have taken here only four combinations but there can be infinite number of combination but the point to remember is that all these combination in indifference schedule will give us same level of satisfaction to a consumer that is what the main idea uh, behind consumer indifference schedule so what my point is my point is the combination say suppose if if i am a consumer and i am consuming one unit of food and 10 units of cloth so i can change the combination i can have two unit of food or seven unit of cloth so like this i can have several combination but the point is all of these combination will give me a same satisfaction that is what the idea is and i hope when uh, when we will uh, further proceed with the topic you can understand what actually i am talking about so let us see uh, some more co important concept here so you can see here another important concept is indifference curve so indifference curve is nothing but it is also known as iso utility curve so this is a another name of indifference curve that we have given and indifference curve is nothing but actually a diagrammatic presentation of indifference schedule so the table that you have seen see this is the table you have seen so when i'm going to represent this table in the form of graph then what i'm going to get i'm going to get indifference uh, curve or indifference uh, graph so you can see here uh, in on the horizontal axis we can measure any any commodity uh, in my uh, example i have taken food and clothing and now suppose i am taking the example of burger uh, burger and wine so these are the two goods that i have so i can have any combination of the two goods but the point is those combination which give me same level of satisfaction if i join those combination then the graph or the curve that i am going to obtain that uh, graph is called indifference curve so just have a look into uh, what i'm trying to say so i can have any combination suppose the you can see here my pointer so my if i uh, i'm choosing this combination say suppose at this point so at this point represent that i am getting this that i'm uh, willing to have this much amount of burger and i'm willing to have this much amount of wine so there in this coordinate in this coordinate there can be infinite number of uh, points that represent different combination but what i am doing i am choosing those combination or those point which give me same satisfaction suppose uh, it can be anything 10 10 utils or 100 utils or can be anything so if i am uh, focused on those combination that give me 10 utils of satisfaction and let us say that uh, a is that combination from which i am getting 10 10 utils of satisfaction b is also that point uh, or combination from which i am getting 10 utils of satisfaction and c is also that point from where i am getting 10 utils of satisfaction so like this there can be several point so if i join those point that give me same level of satisfaction then the curve that is obtained is nothing but called indifference curve so this is the idea or i may say that is the main theme of this approach so this approach is completely based on this concept that indifference curve is nothing but it shows various combination of the two goods that consumer can have but all these con uh, combination is going to give same level of satisfaction to the consumer right 
and one more thing here as you can see the third point we are talking about one very important concept called marginal rate of substitution what is this this is the consumer willingness to substitute one good with another good so you can see here uh, i can explain you this so just have a look with a given income so when we have some income suppose if a person uh, or if i have uh, some money in my pocket so uh, when i am choosing combination a so it implies that i am willing to purchase three unit of burger and 30 units of wine but if i want to bring change if i want to bring change or if i want to have more burger so what i can do uh, because when i am consuming uh, combination a i am spending all my money so here you have to assume that always there is a situation of total income equals to total expenditure so my in whatever the income i was having i am using that income to have 3 unit of burger and 30 units of wine now if i want to consume more burger then i have to give up uh, some unit of wine and then only i can have uh, more unit of burger because my income is given to me so therefore what the point is so if i'm shifting myself to combination b so i am consuming uh, two more unit of burger that is the now the my total uh, burger is five but i have to give a five unit of uh, that is uh, wine so the point is for two extra unit of burger i am ready to give a five unit of wine so this the uh, how much amount of wine that i am ready to give up for extra unit of a burger that is nothing but that is a concept called marginal rate of substitution so uh, again i repeat hope you are going to understand so marginal rate of substitution is nothing but it shows that how much amount of any commodity that consumer is ready to give up to have extra one unit of other commodity so that is what marginal rate of substitution so here in this case you can see that for extra two unit of burger or for extra one unit of burger the consumer is ready to give up 2.5 unit of wine so that is what so marginal rate of substitution in this case is 2.5 right so for every extra one unit that how much i'm ready to give up so this is the idea of uh, indifference curve and uh, about marginal rate of substitution okay so moving further as you can see here we are going to discuss about some properties that we uh, uh, we have to talk about indifference curve the first important property just have a look the first important property of indifference curve is that indifference curve slope downward from left to right so if you look into the indifference curve this is a downward sloping li line and what does downward sloping line imply the downward sloping line imply that if i am increasing the quantity consumption of one commodity then i have to give up the quantity consumption of another commodity so that is what the downward sloping line represent this we have seen in the case of demand also that if the price fall then uh, the demand increases so there is an inverse relation so here also we are trying to show the same that uh, by the downward sloping uh, of the indifference curve mean that if i am going to increase the quantity consumption of burger then i have to give up the quantity consumption of wine because my income is given so that is what the importance uh, or the significance of uh, downward sloping indifference curve the second important property that we see in case of indifference curve is indifference curve is convex to the origin so as you look here just have a look the indifference curve is convex to the where to the origin so this is my origin and it is convex i hope you remember concave and convex concept so this is convex now the question is what does convex of convexity of indifference curve imply so if you look here that what does convexity imply then convexity of indifference curve imply diminishing marginal rate of substitution a very important concept to understand right again so please pay uh, your 100% attention and listen to what I'm trying to say so the convex nature of indifference curve imply that, that there is a diminishing marginal rate of substitution just now I told marginal rate of substitution is nothing but it is the willingness of the consumer to give up uh, one commodity in order to have extra one unit of another commodity so the point is diminishing means for every extra unit of burger that i am ready to consume my willingness to give up wine will keep on decreasing what do i mean i mean that uh, what, what actually i mean here actually this graph do not depict what uh, i mean here but still i'll try to explain you so just uh, imagine like this that here it is 3 this is 4 and this is 5 
just imagine that this is three four and five unit so when i am ch changing my uh, when i am increasing the uh, consumption of burger by one unit i am ready to pay i am ready to give up i am ready to give up five unit of wine so that is from uh, now it is 25 so change is how much uh, that is changes five unit when i am again uh, want to consume one extra unit of burger say four this time i will not ready to give up only five but i will be ready to give up less than five so the point is here you can see here it is written 20 but i can take it here say suppose 21 so now the change the how much i'm ready to give up i'm ready to give up only four unit of wine because a rational consumer want uh, both the commodity so simply for time being uh, because if uh, we would have got a, a class setup. I would have explained you uh, with some uh, numerical examples that uh, how what what this convexity of indifference curve imply. But for yes, of course, uh, it's not that we cannot uh, deal with this topic here. The point is the convexity imply that as the consumer keep on increasing the uh, combination of one good by one unit, his willingness to give up the second good will keep on decreasing because he want both the good to have in, in his basket. So he want both the good to consume and therefore his willingness to give up a second good will keep on decreasing, right? So that is what actually the convexity of in indifference curve imply. We have two more properties of indifference curve as you can see here that higher indifference curve in, uh, curve uh, yield higher level of satisfaction. So the higher the indifference curve, it, it means the higher the level of satisfaction because I can have more goods in my basket. So just imagine, I'll show you one picture, just have a look to this picture. If you look into this picture, then I can make you understand what I mean by higher indifference curve represent higher level of satisfaction. The point is when consumer satisfaction is going to increase if he has more number of goods in his basket, right? So if a consumer has a basket where it has uh, two unit of commodity X and two unit of commodity Y, the point is uh, he can uh, achieve more satisfaction if he has more, more of both the good. That means suppose now if I can have three unit of X and three unit of Y, so my satisfaction will increase because I'm having more number of goods or it may be a situation that he has one, one that's, that is the commodity X still remains same as two, but the commodity Y has increased to three. So still I have one of the commodity more in my basket. So that is again one situation where I can say that my satisfaction is increasing. So consumer satisfaction will increase if he has more number of commodities in his basket. And if you look into the indifference curve here, then you will find that IC1, just have a look, suppose. So this is a uh, this is where I was there in IC1. So I was consuming two unit of X and I was consuming two unit of Y. So if I shift to IC2, that is the higher indifference curve. And suppose if I'm still consuming two unit of Y, then if I draw a horizontal line like this, then you can see that the consumption of X has increased. Consumption of X has increased. So in my basket, commodity X is increasing. Similarly, if I move further to IC3, that implies that if I'm still consuming commodity two unit of commodity Y, then at the same, what I can see that the, uh, the amount of X is further increasing. So that is what the idea is that higher the indifference curve, higher is the uh, level of satisfaction because consumer has more of the commodity in his basket. And finally, the fourth important property that we have with respect to indifference curve is that indifference curve never intersect each other. That means what do I mean? If I'm going to draw two indifference curve, just have a look into here. So you see here there are uh, three indifference curve. But do you, do you find that the indifference curve are intersecting? No, they are. They never intersect each other. Why they never intersect each other? They never intersect each other only because if they do so, then they violate one of a very important law, and that law is called law of transitivity, right? Uh, after afterward, I'll explain you what is this law of transitivity. For time being, you just uh, keep in your mind that the two indifference curve never intersect each other because if they do so, they violate the law of transitivity, transitivity and that is not possible. Law of transitivity cannot be violated. So we can see here there are four important properties. First is indifference curve is downward sloping. Indifference curve is convex that imply diminishing marginal rate of substitution. We have indifference curve, higher indifference curve represent higher satisfaction. And 
and two indifference curve never intersect each other. So these are the four important properties of indifference curve. There are some more concepts that we have to go through. The one is called indifference map. So indifference map is nothing but it is a set of indifference curves. So if in any graph we have more than uh, one indifference curve, then that uh, is called indifference map. You can see here uh, the picture is uh, given, the graph is given. Here we have more than one indifference curve and therefore this is called indifference map. What we have uh, another important concept that is budget line. What is budget line? Budget line is nothing but it also shows the various combination of the two good that consumer can purchase given the price and income. This is what a very, uh, very uh, specific or I may say a very genuine concept. So the budget line, we all know that uh, when uh, after getting the salary or after getting uh, the money, what we do, we make a budget. How we make a budget? We make a budget so that we can, uh, we do not, we, why we make a budget? We make a budget so that we should not cross our income. So it's not possible for me to consume uh, goods such that my expenditure goes beyond my income. So therefore, what the point is? The point is that I have to prepare a budget. And when I can prepare a budget, when the price is known to me and the income of mine is known to me because I cannot uh, spend more than my income. So that is what I'm talking that total income equals to total expenditure. That is that condition is possible for me. Right. So budget line is nothing, but it is a line that shows the combination of the two good that consumer can purchase when the price of the good is known to him. And at the same time, when income of the consumer is known. So you can see here, this is a budget line. So this is a budget line. This downward sloping line is nothing but it is a budget line and what does it shows it shows the two goods see here uh, on the horizontal axis good x is there and in the vertical axis good y so there can be any combination say suppose for example uh, a, pe a person can consume uh, combination k what does k show the k show that he is consuming two unit of x and he is consuming two unit of y but the point is this combination is inside the budget line so that means all the combination which is inside the budget line are those combination that imply that total income uh, is not equal to total expenditure. The consumer is saving some part of money. But in economics, we are saying that the consumer is going to reach equilibrium when he will uh, reach a condition of total income equals to total expenditure. Definitely, this point is not welcome here in this case. Similarly, if you take the point H, can you see the point H? So point H represent what? Point H represent that consumer want to consume five unit of X and he want to consume five unit of Y, but he cannot achieve this. Why he cannot achieve this? Because this is his income line. So he cannot cross the income line. So the max maximum that he can go within this area or on the budget line. So we say a rational consumer is one who is on his budget line. That means somewhere on the budget line. So if a consumer is somewhere on the budget line, say suppose if I am somewhere at this point, you can see the arrow mark here. So it implies that a person is consuming three unit of X and he is consuming six unit of Y and he is uh, his total income is equals to total expenditure. So he will be called a rational consumer. So here in economics, we will talk about those rational consumer for whom total income is equals to total expenditure. I hope you are getting my point. So budget line is nothing but budget line is the limit that uh, is given to the consumer. So consumer cannot cross their budget line. So that is what a budget line is. And the slope of this budget line is PX by PY, price of commodity X by price of commodity Y, right? So this is the idea behind budget line and this is the idea behind uh, indifference map. Hope you are getting my point. So let us move further. So this is what I have uh, shown you that is uh, total income is equals to total expenditure. So uh, quantity of X into per unit of price of uh, per unit of X quantity of Y into price of per unit of Y and that is equals to total income. Income is represented by a symbol M. So you can see here as I told uh, combination K is possible but uh, that represent that consumer is not rational in behavior. Combination H is not possible uh, because it is crossing the in total income of the consumer and for a rational consumer he can be at any point on the budget line. So rational consumer will always remain on any point on the budget line. So this is the idea. So let us now discuss about the equilibrium. So as you can see here, the equilibrium in this approach is actually determined uh, from this diagram, from this diagram where I'm using the concept of indifference curve and I'm using the concept of budget line. Just have a look and uh, let me explain you this graph. 
So what I'm, what we are doing, we are taking commodity X uh, on the horizontal axis and commodity Y on the vertical axis. And these are my indifference curve for X and Y. I told you what is indifference curve? It is nothing but a combination of the two goods. So for IC1, IC2 and IC3, there are three indifference curve. And we have a budget line BA. This is my budget line. So what I can do, I can consume uh, any combination of X and Y uh, somewhere here or on my budget line. So as you see here, economists argue that consumer will reach equilibrium at the point where indifference curve is tangent to budget line. Tangent means it is just touching. So you can see from the diagram that IC2, that is an indifference curve, is just touching the budget line at point E. So uh, economists argue that this is the point of equilibrium of a consumer. Now the question is, uh, why they argue? So the, uh, I can explain you with a concept like this. So let us uh, have an argument that why point E is the point of equilibrium and uh, other points are not the point of equilibrium. Uh, achha, first thing, if I take the IC1, so what I told, remember the uh, properties of indifference curve, I told you that higher indifference curve represent higher level of satisfaction. So no consumer will want to uh, remain in IC1 because every consumer want to maximize his satisfaction and therefore he will be in uh, he will be maximizing his satisfaction when he is at ic3 so i every consumer will want themselves to go to ic3 that is the highest indifference curve here but the point is uh, any combination on indifference curve ic3 is not achievable by consumer consumer cannot achieve any combination here why because the budget line does not permit it i cannot go beyond the budget line because that is what my income limit is so therefore i cannot remain on ic3 now the point is what about ic1 so what i can see that in uh, on ic1 yes of course any combination on ic1 is possible why i'm saying this suppose take the point g so yes g is possible so i can consume the combination g where i can consume some amount of x and some amount of y but the question is a rational consumer why he will uh, stay at uh, indifference lower indifference curve that is what a valid question is the if you look into the graph then you will find that a rational consumer will never will uh, never be willing to remain on lower indifference curve when he can achieve a higher indifference curve and hence a higher satisfaction so you can see from the graph very well that a, a rational consumer can go to the higher indifference curve ic2 so ic2 represent higher level of satisfaction than ic1 so i will never choose to remain on ic1 if i can increase my satisfaction and from ic2 i can see that i cannot stay anywhere on ic2 i cannot stay on this range i cannot stay on this range the combination that uh, is higher uh, for me highest for me and is uh, also uh, i can purchase or achieve is point e because point e is uh, just tangent to the budget line so the, uh, i am on my budget line and at the same time i am on the higher indifference curve than ic1 so the economist say or argue that point e is the point of equilibrium for a consumer so therefore i can also say like this that uh, uh, because you know the slope of budget line is nothing but it is px by py and mrs is nothing but it is actually what we have seen in the uh, cardinal approach that is mux by muy so i'll take you to that slide to make you understand that even even if we are talking about ordinal approach that is the indifference curve approach but the condition of consumer equilibrium remains same so this is the condition of consumer equilibrium so in, in case of ordinal approach also because mrs is nothing but it is the ratio of mux by muy uh, so just uh, see this so mux by muy so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you that why i'm saying that this is the condition of consumer uh, equilibrium so let me show this so let me come to the graph again uh, yes so you have seen this so I am somewhere I will uh, show you the right so let's see where the condition is going to come let me take the picture uh, only so just have a look sorry uh, 
yes so this is what this is what actually i was telling so i was telling this is the condition of consumer equilibrium in cardinal approach and i'll show you that the same this this condition of uh, consumer equilibrium in indifference curve is also nothing but exactly this exactly this so just have a look mrs i told you mrs is what it is nothing but a ratio of mux by muy so uh, mux by muy so if you take M my here then mux by muy is nothing but it is mrs and if you if you take px here then that is px by py so a little bit of uh, here and there or cr cross multiplication you, you are going to get the same kind of point so the point is whether we are talking about cardinal approach or we are talking about ordinal approach the condition of consumer equilibrium is same that is ratio of mux by P px is equals to muy by py so uh, in or ordinal approach the consumer will reach equilibrium at point e right so hope you are going to like this video uh, please uh, go through this uh, chapter again and again go through this video again and again because this is uh, not a very easy chapter so we have to go through it again and again to understand its concepts and logic right so thank you we'll continue with uh, some more videos uh, uh, for some more uh, chapters thank you very much